Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you on this rather blustery Thursday morning, but it's a beautiful day outside. I'm looking forward to going out for a walk later, the, later today. Yesterday was a watershed day for our nation. In spite of a great deal of anxiety, I think things went a lot more smoothly than many people feared. Half of the nation was elated, shedding tears of joy, and talking about being able to breathe again. And meanwhile, the other half of the nation, I suspect, was divided between those who feel rage because their agenda was sidetracked and others confused because they know in their hearts that they are emotionally uh, conservative, politically conservative, economically conservative. And so the democratic agenda does not appeal to them. But I think for those people, there has been much that's disturbed them in recent weeks. And it was a relief to have that finished. I truly believe that a majority of Americans would actually agree on a number of basic realities. One is that too many people have died of COVID-19 in spite of the extraordinary success the Trump administration had in producing the vaccines at warp speed, the absence of a national strategy and a plan seemed to result in a greater loss of life than was necessary. I I do believe too that many uh, Republicans believe that conservative economic and social uh, ideas appeal to a large number of people across the spectrum of race and culture in our nation. But they see that that was sabotaged by an alliance with white supremacy that has no place in their party. And the appeal to those conspiracy theory groups, um, white supremacists, certainly I would agree is inherently sinful. I think the third thing that most people would agree on is that a different economic approach right from the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, that many jobs could have been saved, fewer people would have been unemployed, deprived of housing, and fewer families would have been able to, well, fewer families would have been in food lines picking up food worrying from day to day about where the next meal was coming from. I'd also throw into this the the fourth item. I think a vast majority of Americans agree that the Earth's atmosphere needs to be healed. Uh, There are lots of different approaches and ways of doing that, and there's disagreement about that, but the fundamental agreement is there. So, There is much that we share in our yearning for a better future for our nation. There's also a great deal to lament from the experiences of the past year. Cameron Trimble reminded me of the quotation of Archbishop Oscar Romero. He says, there are many things that can only be seen through eyes that have cried. We have cried. We have cried a great deal. We've learned, uh, we must not forget, but we shouldn't allow our memories to prevent us from bringing healing change. There was a lot of talk yesterday about unity. Uh, My prayer is that the close uh, division in, in the houses of Congress will enable, will force our politicians to speak together and to seek compromises and to end this terrible era of rage and gridlock that has immobilized our federal government in recent years. Our eyes that have cried must help us to heal our souls and open our hearts and minds to see those who see the world differently from the way we do, our our sisters and brothers of the human family. At the same time, we will hear the call of Jesus inviting us to bring good news to poor people, release to the prisoners, freedom for the oppressed, and healing for the sick, the victims of COVID, including their families, 
including the families of the 400,000 people who have died. Weren't you impressed, whatever your political stripes, by the remarkable Amanda Gorman yesterday? I think she spoke to our nation's soul. She said this, when day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must may, we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. In the norms of notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we're far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we're, that doesn't mean that we're striving to form a, a union that is perfect. We're, we're striving to forge a union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions great words that inspired our nation yesterday. So let's look to our future with confidence and with hope. Uh, let's at the same time be ready to heal the wounds that have been part of our lives in recent months. I invite you to pray with me. Loving God, we pray that you will both comfort us and challenges for the living of these days. In our suffering, may we seek your healing hand and the healing skills of those who can free us from our pain. Give us such confidence in the power of your grace and your love that even when we are fearful and the way is uncertain, that we may put our whole trust in you and seek your way for the human family. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I wish you a blessed and holy day.